Hello, friends. My name is Chris Orwig. I am a Sony artisan, a photographer, author, and teacher. And in this tutorial, I want to share with you some advanced retouching techniques in Photoshop. But first, I want to walk through a few images here in Lightroom to talk about the issue that we'll be looking at. You know, sometimes when you shoot backlit photographs like this one here, the image looks great. Here's another image, more of a subtle look to it, or another one where we have the, su the sun behind the subject, but it just looks pretty clean and straightforward. Yet in other times, you may have a backlit image and then you have these little lens flare items, these little orbs of color show up and you may find them to be distracting like right here in this image. Sometimes you may find them really subtle and okay. They kind of add a nice atmosphere. Yet in other situations, perhaps what you wanna do, like what I wanna do with this image is I wanna get rid of this object here and this one down below. Now, when it comes to retouching away something which is bigger, you definitely need to go over to Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and jump over to Photoshop. And inside of Photoshop, I have this image open. You can see our little issues there. How are we going to deal with those? Well, we're going to deal with those with a two-step approach. We're going to create a new group. And I'll go ahead and name this one step, step number one. And then I'll create a new layer inside of that. And what I'm going to do first is work with my clone stamp tool. Now with the clone stamp tool, I'll choose a brush without any hardness, nice and small brush, and I want to work to all layers so that the retouching will be on this layer rather than on the background. I'll zoom in a little bit here, press Option or Alt to set your source area, and then just kind of subtly go from the bottom to the top and just look to try to remove this little color that or problem that we have there. Okay, well, it, it, it got rid of the brightest part, but the color issue is still really kind of a problem, right? How are we gonna deal with that? Well, we need to create another layer. Here, we'll go ahead and name this layer just so that we can keep track of things. We did some cloning. Then next, we're gonna do some hue saturation. And actually, I'm gonna delete that layer. I don't need to have that one. I'll do a hue saturation adjustment layer here. With hue saturation, what you can do is something which is called colorize. Now colorize, you can choose a color and it will colorize the entire image. What we're going to do is choose a color which is similar to the surrounding area. So I'm gonna to try to choose something that might blend in to this blonde hair here. So I'm just looking to try to find the right color. You probably won't get it right, but it doesn't really matter. And you'll see why in a second. Next, go over to the mask tab for properties and then click invert. That will conceal all of that colorization. Then we'll grab our brush. We want to paint with white. We want a brush that has 0% hardness and a little bit bigger than that. And opacity will go down to about 30% or so, approximately. Now the brush, I need a little bit bigger, so I'll make it a touch bigger. With a low opacity, what we can do is just start to paint over this color. And I don't know if you're really going to see this, but what I'm doing is I'm just kind of painting over the areas where we had some of this lens flare coloration and I'm painting over it with my new color, which is this one from Colorization. So I'm just making multiple brush strokes here. If you want it to go faster, of course, you could increase your opacity and just do a little bit over here and then a little bit more on this area down here. Remember with Lens Flare, we don't have to get it all the way out, but you can see it's starting to kind of blend in nicely a little bit here in the background. Now, sometimes the problem with colorization is that the color will be a little bit too uniform. And so after having made a few of these adjustments, you can see those here. We want to work on the mask, increase the feather of our brush strokes that will help things blend in a little bit, and then create one more adjustment, color balance. With color balance, we can add a little bit of red and maybe a little bit of magenta. And then we'll go and do the same thing. Go to the mask, click invert. Grab your trusty brush, paint with white, nice soft edges here, no hardness, and a brush, lower opacity, and we'll just bring in a little bit of some other color. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of this, uh, I don't know, what did I have there? A little bit of red or magenta, and just kind of fine tuning the way that color appears. And let me just see a little bit, just add a little bit more color. I'm gonna make this a little dramatic so you can see what's happening here. I'm adding all this color in, and then I'll soften it up but hopefully you can see me paint in some of that color there. See how that's coming in. Increase the feather on those brush strokes. That will help that fade away. And then, of course, decrease opacity to until you have the desired effect. 
Now, the whole, whole point with all of this step one is just to start to improve the color that we have in that area. We could keep fine tuning that, and it looks like I have a few little areas where I could do a little bit more on this, but for the most part, I think I'm going in a decent direction with how this is working. Okay, well, that had to do with, you know, cloning away and then color adjustments. Okay, that was a little bit advanced. Now we're going to get really advanced. <laughs> Here we go. We'll click to create another group. We'll call this one step number two. And inside of step two, we are going to do some cloning. And this is a retouching technique that is helpful for all different types of retouching. It's basically looking for good content, like good part of the blanket, and covering up the bad content. So we'll create a new layer. Call this one cloning. Grab the clone stamp tool. Press the S key or just click on it. Brush, again, we'll go with 0% hardness. We'll go all the way up to 100%. Sample all layers, so all the retouching is right here. And all that I'm going to do is Option or Alt, click on a good sample area, and then I'm going to bring this in. So I want to make sure I'm bringing this in at 100% opacity. And so I'm just bringing in an, on a new area. I know it's not in the right area, but don't worry about that yet because I'll be moving this to the right area in a little bit. And you may be worried too, thinking, oh no, you know, it doesn't look very good because um, the edges won't line up and, and the shape won't really work. Again, all of that we will fix momentarily. But for the first part, all we're doing is we're just getting some good content. We're cloning this over to this area right around here. All right, great. Now I have plenty of good content to work with. What the heck do we do next? We're going to do some free transforming and warping. So use the move tool. Go to edit, transform, free transform right there. And we'll just move this into position. Get it close. You can use the arrow keys to nudge it around if you need to. Then there's a little registration point in the middle, free transform. Move that to a nice pivot point so that what I can do is I can pivot this up and over the content that I want to cover. So I need to move this up and over maybe right around there. I'm just kind of guessing at this point, but something around there. Then next we'll click on the warp icon. That's up here in the options bar. With warp, what we can do is we can move this around. It makes it a little bit more fluid so we can kind of nudge things around or grab these handles. You can see how I'm bending this. And we may need to bend this a little bit more in a moment, but for now I'm just going to try to start it out in that spot. And then press the check mark or press enter or return to apply that. Okay, it looks really bad. <laughs> I know that. But just stick with me for a second. We'll add a layer mask. And if you go in your properties panel to your mask and click invert, that will then hide all of what you brought over. And then we'll grab our brush and we'll paint with white. And we'll just start slowly here. And we'll paint with white and we'll see if we can't bring up the fabric which we have on top of that and cover up this glowing part of the image because really that's that's the only issue i have with this i mean everything else there is fine it's just the um the glow there i think was it was drawing it was drawing attention too much to that area and so i'm just going to go ahead and bring this in i had a low opacity it was it was on 60 percent. i hadn't realized that so I just press zero, it goes to 100 now. That's why it kind of looked faint. I was trying to figure out why does this look so faint right now? Um, just had too low opacity. All right, so kind of bring this in, make sure this is blending in nicely and kind of looks sort of natural and everything. Maybe go all the way up to where we have that green little edge there and come down this way. If you make a mistake, press the X key. That will flip flop this so that now I'm painting with black. So I could paint some of this away or press the X key again. and as I'm doing this, I'm trying to find the right combo of these two layers. And it looks like, or from my opinion, I kind of need to bring it all the way up. I was just sort of checking that to see if I needed. And it looks like I did. All right. So, so far, so good. We have nice new fabric coming in here and just modify it a little bit. And let's zoom out to see how we are. And what it looks like now is we just have a new kind of shape of the fabric and we matched our colors. It's all lined up and everything. And that's actually looking pretty good. Of course, we could fine tune that some more. We could do some more warping to customize the shape and different things. But for the point of this tutorial, 
let me zoom in so you can see it. Um, I think it's going in a pretty good direction. Just a couple more little modifications to make a little bit more down there. And then create one more layer with the clone stamp tool. I need to fix up these edges here a little bit more. These aren't quite defined enough, so I'm just cloning in a little bit more around here and a little bit more in this area because I didn't really like the, the way that edge was looking there. All right, well, there you have it. A two-step advanced approach to retouching. Let's review these steps so that you can use these when you have lens flare or any kind of issues that you need to retouch away. All right, well, step one was all about doing a little bit of cloning. We cloned away the biggest area. Then we used hue saturation on color eyes and a little bit of color balance and masking to even out the color. That was step number one. Step number two was cloning to a new area, a new part of the fabric, masking that in. Well, I should say first we free transformed it, warped it, then we masked it in, and then did a little bit of cleanup work here with some more cloning. So I'll name that layer cloning right there. All right, well, there you have it. Some advanced retouching tips on how you can improve your images. And while I worked on an image which had a lens flare issue, these techniques work with what really whatever issue you have. They're great ways to be able to help you to improve your photographs. Here it is, our before and after. And with that, hey, thanks so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another one. Have a wonderful day and bye for now.